Have you ever wondered what it's like to make sunscreen from scratch? Just study Lego. For the Super Bowl and being the main advertiser is on its way out. The experience has been disappointing people for over 225 years. This is cool. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman, owner of Good Monster, a content conversion and retention agency. And this is Marketing by John, where I talk about all the trends and cool and interesting and weird news happening in the marketing world. And boy, do we have a doozy for you. All right, let's start with Nara Smith and Mark Jacobs. Nara is an influencer. She's got 9, 10 million followers on TikTok, and she's got a very unique style of content. She has a very low, soft voice when she's describing something, and she uses the TikTok-esque clip cut uh, jump cuts in her videos. So her content is very digestible. She's also a model, so she is beautiful and uh, aesthetically nice to look at, right? So visually people are watching her videos, but that is not the reason why she has millions of views. The reason is because she has a very unique sort of episode that she comes out with, and it's called Made From Scratch, where she literally makes things from scratch. Yes, food, like the video where she made flaming Hot uh, Cheetos from scratch for her husband. But that is not where it is the most interesting. The most interesting is that she makes other non-food items as well. Kind of blurring into the non-food items is bubblegum. Yes, it's a, a, kind of a food, but it's, you don't eat it, right? So it's bubblegum. She made bubblegum from scratch. The video got 50 million views. It was super interesting and very... Uh, curiosity driven, right? Like why would you make bubble gum from scratch or how do you make bubble gum from scratch? But it didn't stop there. She also made sunscreen from scratch. So this whole from scratch series that she has of episodes is the reason they're getting 50 million views, 20 million views. That's bringing in a huge amount of followers to her and it adds such a unique angle to her against all the other models or all the other TikTokers or all the other social media content creators out there. So the lesson here is if, if you're a creator is find one really nerdy specific thing that you are really good at and really interested at, at and, and, and create content about that thing. Do it and you will find your tribe. Uh, but there's a bigger lesson here for brands and that's where Mark Jacobs comes in. So Mark Jacobs worked with uh, Nara Smith to create a, a handbag from scratch. And the video went super viral. It got 21 million views. And uh, that was when it was posted on Mark Jacobs' TikTok. By the way, their other videos were getting like thousands of views, right? And so by finding the perfect viral trend from the perfect viral influencer and partnering with them on something that's organic, like the made from scratch and including your brand, can be huge. So what's the lesson here? The lesson is select your influencers or your creator partnerships very carefully. Make sure that there is a trend that can be worth all the effort and negotiations and creative involved in the campaign. Make sure you work with the influencer and you tap into their creativity rather than trying to force feed something to them directly. You can win big. You can. All right, if you're in the entrepreneurship space, you run a business, you own a business, you're in marketing, without a doubt you have seen Founder Mode. Founder Mode came out of uh, Brian Chesky, who is the uh, CEO and co-founder of Airbnb, um, came out saying that he got bad advice when he was starting. And that was the advice to hire great people and let them go. He said that that is not good advice. That's what everyone gives it as advice, even very successful people. But he said that is not the best advice. Instead, he stays he stays diligent and, and, and very integrated into every aspect of the company to make sure it's quality. And Paul Graham, a very well-known successful investor, decided to write an essay on founder mode. And founder mode essentially says that there's manager mode and there's founder mode. Manager mode is finding really good people and delegate, 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 delegate. He said there's a lot of risks involved in manager mode, uh, like not being sensitive to small problems that could turn into big problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's founder mode. And founder mode is when uh, you stay intimately uh, uh, involved in each of the most important parts of your company to make sure things are consistently working, consistently profitable, consistently moving forward. And then once he came out with this essay, founder mode hit Twitter and LinkedIn and all the other social platforms 
platforms like wildfire. So hence why you probably have seen it. Uh, I have started many businesses, failed several, uh, succeeded at others, and uh, never made it anywhere clear, anywhere near uh, Airbnb's success. So I can't speak on the scale of founder mode, but I've worked with billion dollar companies and hundred million dollar companies and everything in between uh, 10 million and on up. And I can definitely tell you the companies that are the most successful and the most organized are the ones who have somebody at the top that is deeply integrated into each of the facets of the company. And the companies that are the least organized, <clears throat> billion dollar companies, are the ones who have somebody at the top that has no idea what is going on underneath. They are the most disorganized. They are the slowest. They are the hardest to fix problems. So I agree with founder mode. I think founder mode is the way that most companies should operate in today's day and age. Maybe not in 1990 when uh, private equity and, 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 and public companies were sort of ruling the world, right? But in today's world where there's a lot more operators, a lot more founders that are growing very large companies, stay involved. Your company will operate better. Okay, the next one I have for you is uh, a good example of why bad PR is not always bad PR. There's a giant cave system in Kentucky called the Mammoth Cave National Park. And they were voted uh, uh, one of the worst experiences um, on the internet. Uh, uh, a bunch of people came out saying that it was boring and the destination was not worth it. And they decided to go, they decided to lean in on that. Uh, they created a Facebook post which says, uh, basically, jo join the, the experience that has been disappointing people for over 225 years. And the post went viral. It got 102,000 likes. It got 30,000 shares. Um, and it, it essentially went viral. So there is hope if you've got some sort of bad product that could be turned into a good product, you could lean into that uh, and, and, and get some viral sensation about that. Now, I don't recommend that any D2C or e-commerce company does this by any means because if you have a bad product, uh, generally it's not a good thing. However, if you have something that you can't change, like a giant cave system, you might as well lean into the PR that you do get and cross your fingers and hope and pray. But this is an amazing example of a really great marketing team that found something that is pretty much like a business killer, and they turned it around into a viral success. Good job, marketing team, for Mammoth Cave National Park. Okay, next, it appears that big beer, Anheuser-Busch, which has had a working relationship with the NFL for 33 years uh, for the Super Bowl and being the main advertiser, is on its way out. And it's high competition, high stakes for other brands, uh, Molson Coors, as well as big sodas, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola, all vying for sort of that uh, uh, premium Super Bowl sponsorship spot. Now, they've all had advertising in and around it uh, in a variety of different places. But we're seeing a big shift, not only in the types of products that Gen Z and the younger generation really uh, really looks at as as uh, attractive brands and beer and, and soda is not it. We live in a world where uh, health and wellness is is sort of the priority. However, when you watch football, you're not exactly thinking of how can I get a six pack while I'm sitting here on the couch screaming my face off at my favorite team. So it will be very interesting to see which brands fill that void of the 33 year old relationship that Anheuser-Busch had with the NFL Will it be Molson Coors and another beer company? Will it be a soda company that's uh, pretty much sugaratizing and uh, uh, causing our kids to becoming addicted to sugar? That's my opinion. Not everyone's. Uh, or will it be some other company that pops in like State Farm, which sponsors Patrick Mahomes and uh, just sponsored Agent a a Aiden Hutchington. Oh my goodness. I can't even say the name. Aiden Hutchinson. I'm so angry right now because the Rams just lost in overtime to the Lions last night when I'm filming this. So I don't even want to say the guy's name because he crushed us. But anyways, he plays for the Lions and he's being uh, 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 sponsored by State Farm and State Farm is a big player in the NFL uh, advertising space. So maybe they will step in to be the premium Super Bowl advertiser uh, and crush all the other advertisers that are vying for that spot. We shall see. Next. Okay, YouTube is going to stop feeding what we should look like physically to our teenage sons and daughters. Social media can 
cause major mental problems for our kids. It can't. The science is there. I think that the social media platforms, they're already moving in this direction, are going to stop prioritizing the vanity part of influencers and creation like likes and followers and things like that. They're, gonna, they're, they're, they're already starting to do that. Instagram already hides the likes on a video um, uh, or, or a post. And other platforms are moving in that direction anyways. They're prioritizing views over the, the actual clickable metrics. And YouTube now uh, not trying to feed you the way you should look. They're already moving in this direction. I think social media is going to become, they're going to be forced to be a little bit more of a regulated uh, platform. They've tried. The government has tried. The U.S. government has tried. Twitter just came back out with free speech, right? So like it ebbs and flows, but social media is moving in this direction. And once we start to see really detrimental impact in our youth, which we're just starting to see now, uh, they're going to be forced to regulate and uh, forced to make it a safer place to be. But we'll see how that all works out. Okay. It's pretty apparent that the retail calendar is pretty much becoming obsolete. Halloween is starting in July. For some reason, you walk into a Lowe's and there's a giant 30-foot skeleton right there. I don't get it. I'm sitting here recording this uh, September 9th, and I'm pretty sure next week Christmas stuff will start to come out. It's wild. Duncan came out with their pumpkin spice latte uh, in August just to beat Starbucks. We're seeing this, everyone trying to beat each other, primarily in the retail environment. Everyone is starting earlier. Everyone's trying to beat everybody else. Let's be the first to generate money, first to generate sales, first to generate buzz. And it just keeps pushing the, 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 the retail calendar back and back and back. Is there any end? Is there any end? Will we soon start celebrating the beginning of Christmas in April? God, I hope not. During the last earnings call, Walmart said they grew about 4 or 5% in revenue and 21% in e-commerce growth. And they attributed that to a few different things, one of them being generative AI. Now, you're going to hear me talking about AI a ton. Um, I love parts of it. I hate other parts of it. I'm iffy as to how it's actually going to impact our society and us as humans, primarily on the creative side. I'm really worried about that. Um, but as far as foundational strategies and data, and there's gonna, it's it's going to completely revolutionize the way companies operate. And instead of having to dive into data manually and operating in, in spreadsheets, uh, it's going to be done inside generative AI. And the answers that we as retailers or brands or marketers or any business for that matter need in order to make split second decisions, like when to send a personalized email, what somebody is actually interested in when they're on your website, these types of things are going to be amazing. This is going to be amazing use of generative AI is to give us what we actually want as consumers. Now, a lot of people might say, well, I don't want to be fed more advertisements. Me neither. Nobody does. You know what I want to be fed? Stuff that I actually want and I actually like when I want it. That's going to be such a powerful thing that generative AI is going to allow us to do. And Walmart, of course, they're one of the biggest companies in the world. They're already doing it, and they're already seeing a lot of success because of it. All right, last, I'm going to leave you with a feel-good one. Uh, Barbie partnered with the WNBA to have a, a Barbie night um, where they uh, came out with custom Barbie uh, Chicago Sky editions and uh, really a great example of brand alignment. The movie was great. It was a whole experience. And so this is a great launch into Barbie partnering with other brands and continuing that conversation. If you want a good example of why this is so amazing and so successful, just study Lego. Lego has done a, a, a great job at aligning themselves between their movies and their toys and uh, uh, brand partnerships. Lego is a great example of how you really do brand alignment and collaboration that all starts with content. Whether you can afford to come out with your own blockbuster movie or you just go put out a YouTube or a TikTok video. It starts with content, then it ends with uh, brand alignments and Barbie, WNBA, great job. All right, that's Marketing by John. I'll see you in the next one.